Okay, well, let's move to my final guest of the hour. And shares in the Australian NASDAQ listed sustainable Bitcoin miner Iris Energy have surged 67% today and almost 100% over the last two trading days after they announced a doubling of capacity by acquiring new mining hardware. We speak now with Iris Energy CEO Daniel Roberts. Daniel, uh, great to see you there. Um, and a, an interesting conversation to have because, I mean, obviously, with some of the turmoil in markets recently, uh, discussions around mining in the crypto space have probably come off the back, uh, front pages perhaps and might be a, a little bit further along uh, the, uh, the, the, the paper, if, if you will. Um, but you've come with a really significant development today, a fairly significant technology upgrade. Can you describe the, the big impact of this? Yeah, look, it's obviously been a better start to 2023. 20, 2022 had all sorts of challenges. We've been around Bitcoin since 2013, and every cycle we see the same thing. These unregulated offshore casinos, I mean exchanges, uh, gamble with customer money, blow themselves up, and we get another cycle of regulation and crackdowns. Bitcoin is a digital commodity. There's only 21 million of them. It gets conflated with this crypto asset class. We as miners, all we're doing is providing computing power. We're a data center operator, 100% renewable energy, we build, own, and operate our own industry-leading proprietary data centers, and we divert our computing power towards securing the Bitcoin blockchain. It's profitable, um, doubling our capacity. I think we've got two exahash, which just went to five and a half, so it's a bit more than that. Uh, it was a great development as a result of a negotiation with the largest uh, hardware supplier in, in the industry called Bitmain. Um, it's been a contract that's been outstanding for about 18 months now and to finally get a resolution on that, cement ourselves as one of the top five global listed miners. Um, it's been a good market reaction, but uh, we're looking to continue the momentum from here. So how do you see the mining space unfolding from here? Because I mean, as I understand it, like any business last year, there was um, macroeconomic and, and other operational issues that made it a little bit more difficult. For example, uh, higher energy prices and a fall in, in the actual token values meant that the margins might have been there uh, as they were in, in the past. Can you describe the kind of backdrop at the moment uh, for, for miners more broadly and, and perhaps give it a little bit of an outlook? Is it a period of consolidation perhaps? Look, it's a period of consolidation in the sense that the market's kind of stabilised. Uh, margins are good. We're still able to mine at sub $10,000 a Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin was 16000 US, yeah, it was a bit more challenging. When it's 24000 today, you know, that's really good margins across any industry. Um, I think industry-wide, we haven't been affected by energy prices. Our strategy for the last four and a half years has been 100% renewable energy. Our power bill our cents per kilowatt hour has not changed in the last 12 months because we are fundamentally about targeting 100% renewables. And as we know, marginal cost renewables is basically the cheapest power uh, that you can get. So look, it's, it's a good time in the mining industry. I think at, we do get conflated with the NASDAQ, the tech sell-off, the broader crypto industry, but we're a real asset infrastructure data center operator just happening to tap into this exponential technology and monetizing it. Do you think with some of the, you uh, are very uh, wryly and uh, humorously referred to some of these exchanges uh, blowing up and some of the changes that could come as a result of that, obviously there was the news in terms of staking, which doesn't uh, dovetail into what you do in particular, but obviously could affect uh, the business uh, uh, just indirectly because of its impact on prices and its appeal for, for cryptocurrencies, broadly speaking. I mean, when it comes to some of these challenges going forward, do you still have a, 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 an optimism uh, about cryptocurrencies? And, and where do you think you sit into a sort of a sophisticated industry, an ecosystem, which might be looking to perhaps offer value add through the blockchain? Yeah, I've never been optimistic about cryptocurrency. Never been optimistic <laughs> about blockchain. Like they are buzzwords. I don't know if people know what they mean. There is one asset, which is a commodity, Bitcoin. There is only 21 million. It's been a finished product for over a decade now. It's proven. Sure, there might be potential in the rest of the technology in a world that's becoming, you know, looking at ways to engage more in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, disintermediate these central authorities, tech companies, governments, etc. I, I can see that thematic, but I, I can't see the value in cryptocurrencies generally. The innovation's great, but that needs to be balanced up with consumer protection and all the bad stuff that's clearly happened and continues to happen. 
So, I mean, I guess to, to dig down in your personal philosophy then, I mean, what what is your business there for and what should the, the role of cryptocurrencies and I suppose this industry, if you will, if I, if I can call it that, what's its role? What's, what's it there to do? Yeah, look, I think cryptocurrency generally is looking to solve a variety of different problems and they'll be successful, they might not be. Bitcoin as a digital asset, the first, it is the truly decentralized coin. There is no CEO, there is no management team, there is no foundation, it is just open source software. And the thing that it solves is digital scarcity. The irony of the internet is we've had this abundance and for the first time we've solved the scarcity attribute. And where that manifests value is as a store of value. The easiest analogy is gold, gold 2.0. It is better at being gold than gold is. It's scarcer, more easier to divide, more easier to transfer. And gold parity, if Bitcoin ever hit gold parity, that's $600,000 a coin in a world where everything else has been digitized and dominated by these social digital networks. Okay, so just to distill that before we go, the, uh, maybe a takeaway, and I, go, I know we veered away from um, what's happened with the business, which is obviously fantastic news, but get back to, to, to Bitcoin 101, the fundamentals, what it was there designed by, by Satoshi. Is that, is, that the, is that the point? Look, it's designed by, we don't know who, um, an individual or an unknown group of individuals. They let this protocol out into the ecosystem. It's game theoretically programmed to survive and thrive through mining incentives, through user incentives. But when you boil it all down, there is only 21 million of them. If you compare it to gold, it exhibits better attributes than gold does at being gold. Scarcer, more easy to transfer, more easy to divide. If one day Bitcoin catches up to gold's market capitalization and the value people see in gold, that is $600,000 per coin. We are still really early in the Bitcoin journey.